Rousing himself, he set to making a fire. He put on an old iron pot filled with water, onions, and sweet potatoes on the flames and lay back as the stew gently bubbled. He peered up to a sky of uniform blue, not a cloud to break up the view. In a few months, the heat would rise, as it always did, and life would change. Winter proved hard, as always, but summer, too, held its own particular dangers. But, for now, out here with no worries, he allowed himself to relax, and before long, with his eyelids growing heavy, he snuggled into his coat and dozed. The sizzling of the pot, accompanied by an acrid smell, brought him back to full consciousness, and he sat up. Stretching out his arms, he went over to the fire and stared into what was left of his stew. Oh, damn it! The water had all boiled away, leaving the vegetables a congealed dark brown mass on the bottom of the pan. He doubted he could save two spoonfuls, but made a brave try of it nevertheless. Scooping up the burnt remnants, he found a couple of pieces of potato, and keeping his mouth half open to allow the cool air to circulate inside, he tenderly munched them down. It was then he heard the footfall. He did his best not to react. Instead, he fanned his mouth in an exaggerated way, giving himself time to check how far away his shotgun was. Perhaps six paces it stood propped against a tree alongside the bivouac. He might make it. Then again, he might not. So he stopped put the pan down on the ground and turned. Two men stood before him, heavy set, dressed in long overcoats, black hats, faces ruddy with the cold air. Neither spoke, their dark eyes never blinking. The world waited. Dan sucked in a breath. Uh, howdy, he said and nodded to the remains of the burnt stew. I'd offer you some, but it's... Well, let's just say it ain't all that palatable. A sudden gust of wind rampaged through the tiny camp, sending up a swirl of dead fallen leaves and particles of dust. It ended almost as soon as it began, but something about it brought a stab of fear to Dan's insides, and he quailed, taking a quick glance towards the shotgun. <laughs> Fellas, he managed, voice quivering, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it is you're wanting but whatever it is i i ain't got it the deeds the two words crackled filled with threat of what dan could not say but he could guess he watched the way their arms hung loose at their sides so close to the revolvers holstered there a loud swallow before he threw out his arms <laughs> fellas I I ain't sure what you, you mean by deeds. This place, said the spokesman, casting a glance around the camp, ticking off the hammered-in stakes with a single nod of his head. This claim, how much is it worth, do you figure? Worth? Oh, hell, hell, I, I doubt if it's anything more than a couple of hundred. Dan licked his lips, trying to buy some time. He climbed to his feet and took a small sideways step. Fellas, uh, I'm not sure where you got your information, but uh, I swear to you, there ain't much of anything left around these parts. You must know that. What there is couldn't feed a family for a year. I, I promise. Show us. Frowning, Dan chanced another glance towards his shotgun. In that single look, he knew he would never make it. His shoulders sagged. How'd you know where to find me? We saw you in town. Followed you. <laughs> now show us. It ain't worth it, fellas. If I'd found anything of value, I'd have... The single metallic clunk of a gun hammer being cocked caused Dan to turn his gaze to the spokesman and the gun filling his hand. The man snarled. Now...